You know what I love? Wasting my hard-earned money on something with little to no inherent value that I also don't actually own. And by the looks of it, so do a lot of ugly monkeys on Twitter. I mean, the whole NFT racket is fine and all, but I've got a better scam for you. Have any of you heard of... Tulips? Look, it was either this or Beanie Babies, and I'm not gonna lie to you, Spangle scares the shit out of me. Besides, I have some first-hand experience with tulips from back when I was a little Dutch girl in the 1630s. Now, Europe kinda sucked at this time in terms of vegetation. That's kind of what you would expect from a land whose best produce was cabbage. But flowers must have been especially dull because when the Ottoman Empire introduced tulips to Europe in 1554, they became the best thing since sliced bread, and any culture that would go crazy over sliced bread must not be the most happening place. The more brightly colored tulips you had showed how prosperous you were. Kind of like how modern day rich people plant brightly colored Lamborghinis to show off their wealth. Tulips were so revered that they were often named with the prefix of Admiral or General. How do you feel knowing that a flower holds a higher rank than you in the military? General, the enemy is advancing on all fronts, our supplies are dwindling, and the troops are planning a mutiny. What should we do? As always, you've been a huge help. By the end of the 16th century, a man named Carolus Clusius brought tulips to what we know today as the Netherlands, where they proved so popular that tulip bulbs were stolen from his garden on two separate occasions for a total of 100 bulbs stolen. A few years later, the Dutch Republic entered into a golden age. Coincidence? Yeah, probably. They ended up creating the first ever stock exchange and stock market. And apparently stocks are like Pringles, because once you pop, you can never stop. People were looking for the next big thing to trade, and since tulips were only gaining in popularity, they seemed like the smart choice. Funny things about tulips though, they only bloom for about a week, and when that week is up, they leave behind a clone bulb that can be dug up and replanted somewhere else for about a third of a year, which was when the flowers would typically be sold. And people everywhere were going, Man, I've got that tulip itch. I can't just wait for two and a half seasons before owning new flowers. I need to have them now! Dude, chill, they're just flowers. You take that back! So florists started selling tulip contracts, which were essentially IOUs promising the flowers to be picked up at a later date. Prices for tulips, and even more so for tulip contracts, began to rise rapidly. Seeing the fastly rising price of these flowers, people began to buy tulip futures. Not so they could have the prettiest garden, or to build this flower sculpture of a sexy Vincent van Gogh, but to sell those contracts to people who want to buy those contracts, to sell to people who want to buy those contracts, to sell to... You get the idea. Of course, even a geriatric sea slug could tell you that a piece of paper was a lot easier to fake than a living organism. So there was also a healthy forgery racket going on at the same time. But what's a good speculative bubble without a rug to tuck from underneath the feet of any unsuspecting speculators? And this was the first ever speculative bubble on record. Before NFTs, cryptocurrencies, tech startups, mortgages, dot-coms, or nightmare fuel. I swear to God that bear is going to exercise its Second Amendment rights from behind those glassy, soulless eyes. Even the most common and boring bulbs were being sold for hundreds of guilders. So we're talking thousands of dollars for a single bulb. People would sell entire properties just to get their grubby mitts on one. With a Viceroy tulip costing five times more than your average house. Well, I'm homeless, my wife left me, and my kids think I'm a failure. But at least I got a potentially legitimate piece of paper that promises me a flower. No, my livelihood! Non-existent tulip bulbs became the fourth largest import behind gin, herring, and cheese. The breakfast of champions. The prices reached their peak on February 3rd, 1637, before subsequently crashing over the course of four months. You might think it was because the power is at B went, Alright, this is getting out of hand, shut it down boys. But it was more likely due to an outbreak of the bubonic plague, which caused people not to show up to any tulip auctions. How ironic that a pandemic killed a speculative bubble, whereas nowadays it starts them. After the crash, the Dutch Republic was drowning in worthless tulip bulbs that they had no interest in. You might think this ended up wreaking havoc on the Dutch economy, and while some people probably did go broke, they were only merchants and lawyers, so no actual people were harmed. Your average yop probably never even knew any of this was happening, and the Dutch economy only took some minor blows. The moral of the story is... Uh... Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Why am I holding a dandelion?